What up, what up, everybody? It's your boy CG. Back to you guys again with more crypto news. Now, before I get into the topic of today's video, if you guys could do me a favor and hit that like button, it's the easiest way for you to show your support for the channel. It takes less than a second and it puts me on the good side of the YouTube algorithm. So, smash the like button. Now, getting into today's topic, so we're going to be discussing the smokes and mirrors that have been penetrating perspective perspective or perspective for a couple of years now when it comes to people who may be interested in entering the cryptocurrency space specifically bitcoin and the biggest perpetrators of this deception are the actual traditional financial institutions i.e the banks so this article actually goes in on this actual deception that has been happening for a couple of years now and the biggest example that I found in this article will be right here. I'm not going to sit here and go through the whole article, but I'm going to do my the strong takeaways that I got from it. So right here, Ms. Michelle Doherty, one of Digibyte's awareness team members. Digibyte is um a really popular cryptocurrency inside the space as well for people who don't know. And a leading lawyer in the crypto space with experience at the United States Department of State, as well as a former United States attorney, reflected on her interaction with, it, with investment advisors from one of the larger U.S. banking institutions. I was personally discouraged from purchasing BTC when I wanted to back in 2014 by my financial advisor from Merrill Lynch. He said it was too risky of an investment. Like an idiot, I followed his bad advice. Just recently, though, Bank of America Merrill Lynch actually came out and named BTC as the best investment of the last decade. Now, can you imagine how this lady must have felt being told something like this in 2014 when the ROI would have been, return on investment, by the way, when the ROI would have been far greater as opposed to now when they're coming out as of recently in the last year, a couple months, that it was the best investment. So it's amazing how people will sit here and let these clear, blatant thieves who behind the scenes probably have been investing in this space for a long time steal their opportunities to change their life from them right out their hands. A second one that I've been talking about for a little bit is actually JP Morgan themselves. JP Morgan does not act in the best interest of their customers. I mean, this is a this is banks, period, right now. Banks do not act in the best interest of their customers. They make all that, they make ridiculous amounts of money, still charge you fees, give you little to no money back when it comes to your interest rates. The only way you could actually see some type of great return on, them, on those interest rates is if you had a significant amount of money in your bank account, i.e. like a million and up upwards of a million dollars in your bank account which most which the average person probably will not see in their lifetime especially the way people are financially uneducated so to have these people rob people in bl in broad daylight using un under the guise of jargon that people can't understand big law not big laws but laws that people can't break down they can't comprehend them that you would have to go to school for you know ridiculous stuff like that it, it's it's understandable that people would you know it's like how can i put this it's like a shepherd leading the sheep and that's what these banks are they're telling people what to do with their money the the shepherd at the end of the day is going to be, be the one that profits or has any time of any type of gain from the herd. So in my personal opinion, we are seeing as of recently JP Morgan unveiling who they truly are, how they truly feel about cryptocurrency with the addition of banking client of client of, of the clients Coinbase and Gemini. So they're showing their true nature. We've seen Jamie Dimon come out and say that BTC is rat poison. Well, not rat. He didn't say rat poison, but that he didn't believe in the BTC revolution and so on and so forth. But apparently, now we're seeing this flip side, where he he did state that the underlying blockchain technology was profitable or was could have something to do with the future of finance. But that was it. But for him to go as far as to letting the entire chase, well, I don't know. The shareholders might have had a big part part in this the shareholders might have 
overruled anything that he might have said. Who knows? We don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. But they, this is this is the reality. He came out and made his statement, and the exact opposite is happening. That's generally how these things work. People need to be more aware of these things. Stop just believing in what these people who are robbing you every day tell you. It, it's it's amazing. Now moving into the next article, Grayscale's Bitcoin holdings have passed three billion, growing seventy six percent since last year. Last year, May, their holdings were in were around two point one billion dollars in BTC. Now it's three point thirty six to be exact. So yeah. Grayscale's BTC Trust has continued to lead other cryptos in the fund, accounting for $3.3 billion, or 89% of the firm's total assets under management. So last year's low was $1.9 billion assets under management. Now it's $3.36. So, like I said, you got to watch the whole field. You have to have situational awareness. You have to have complete awareness. You have to keep your head on a swivel. Always do your research, comprehend where you're putting your money, and always, always act in your own best interest. Don't listen to other people. Cause you know what's crazy? People always, every day, I, I'm always seeing on social media people post how um, their friends are hating on them, and their your friend will say something to you so that you don't get that big opportunity, so that you don't um, make it. You don't you don't have that huge life change life changing um. You don't experience that true life-changing moment. People will say that all day and every day about people they interact with on a daily basis, everyday lives, but they won't carry that same scrutiny over to a gigantic corporate institution that doesn't give a crap about you, people who you've never met in your whole life, people who were born with probably silver spoons in their mouths, and you think that these people have your best interests as opposed to people who are around you? Now, I'm not discrediting the people around you may not want you to do better, but what makes you think that this gigantic corporation is any better? You haven't even met these people before. You're just a number to them. So we have to have, or people have to have that same energy through everything. I hate when people have an energy towards something in one area, but they don't have the same energy towards everything else. It's ridiculous. So we're seeing Grayscale come out with these with these crazy numbers, and it's only going to, how can I put this, allow other people, or not other people, but other institutions to follow suit and start growing their, their assets under management as well. We're going to start seeing the shift like we've seen as of recent with um, JP Morgan allowing Coinbase and Gemini to bank with them. But to wrap up today's video, we're just going to do a quick little um, review of why Ether is up so far. Because people may have missed my previous videos, and here's my analysis of ETH. ETH, in and of itself, has a far bigger community of developers working on it than Bitcoin. You can only do so much with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is really just a payment tool, a payment processor. It's a payment method. ETH has so many things going for it, so many things that can be built on top of it, and it is so fungible and transformative that it is hard to just say what Ethereum is capable of doing because it, whatever you say it's capable of doing, it probably can do 20 other things as well. So just these simple things alone, on top of the fact that Ethereum 2.0 is coming soon, um, the introduction of staking may show that Ethereum can be a, a, um, a store of value. All these other innovations that are coming towards ETH, it's kind of hard to believe that Ethereum hasn't already taken over as the number one cryptocurrency in the market. And in my personal opinion, that's going to happen soon. Right now, I believe that everything is more on the price action side. People are looking at price. They're not really looking at everything from a technical standpoint. So that's just how it is right now. But in the future, as more and more protocols or things get built on top of Ethereum and Ethereum 2.0 comes into being with the introduction of potentially sharding, where the Ethereum will be, will be far past, I say far past, far faster, comparative to maybe Visa and all these other payment processors, we're going to see some extreme changes 
in who may be the dominant cryptocurrency and what cryptocurrency outperforms which. Everybody, this has been your boy CG. Have a great day. Stay safe. I'm out.